Welcome to the Currently Cringing Podcast. I'm your host, Anisha Ramakrishna. I'm a TV personality and entrepreneur. Join me as I spill the chai on my cringeworthy life experiences with a side of dating, pop culture, and lots of laughs. Hey guys, welcome to Currently Cringing. Today we have friend of the show, Aditya. Hey, I'm back. You're back. And the topic today, I think this is fascinating. Black cat energy and golden retriever energies. And how does this play out in dating? And we'll talk about your personal experience in detail in the next episode. But today we're just going to talk about this because I've been told I have black cat energy. What is black cat energy? Well, I think we have different opinions on this because for me, I've experienced black cat energy as like someone who, you know, kind of like we talked about cats and dogs, like and a lot of times I think guys are like dogs, labs, golden retrievers. We're like, we want cuddles. We want to be touched. We want to be like always around and like attention, whereas like cats and maybe not a black cat will be someone, especially women who are like, they'll come to you. But if you go to them, they run away. So that's something we may have talked about on the pod before. And I feel like that's something I've seen a lot in dating. Agree. Like my husband's golden retriever energy and I'm a black cat, I think. And so he had me at the third dump. <laughs> like he yeah. dumped me three times. And I was like, I've talked to a bunch of my friends and my sister's friends even about it. My sister was kind of like, yeah, like, you know, my, you know, her husband, my brother-in-law, she's like, he's always like, all over me and like wants attention and cuddles and she's like i just want my space and i feel like is it a girl boy thing like i don't know are there are there women who can be golden retrievers because i feel like that's not as common i don't know many and i think you only date black cats (laughs) apparently (laughs) and i married a golden retriever you did he's very much i mean you did you married someone who's very similar to me so we got along very similar. That's why you guys get along. But black cat energy, you know, imagine someone independent, enigmatic, and poised, and kind of moody. Like you don't know what mood they're in. Like cat. Yeah. yeah. And then I think it's you said dark energy and kind of like a cloud. Yeah, I think dark energy, like, you know, they're not always like happy. There's probably some depression and some trauma like that's Mm. black cat energy maybe a sprinkle of toxicity meanwhile the the dogs or the retrievers were the ones who have trauma but we just like use that into just needing more affection and cuddles maybe (laughs) or you have healed from it it's debatable about whether if we've all healed i think it's more that like i just need like like, come pet me you know and then i that's my way that's how i'm healing do you ever do something to a girl because you want them to do it to you like do you stroke a girl's hair because you want her to play with your hair um no i've never really thought about that way i think it's kind of just like i'm so love languages like we've talked about this before like mine is i've learned very recently like i thought it was kind of physical touch it's very physical touch which is not the same as sex it's like i just like always like love being hugged and like you know touch caressed all that stuff probably to my detriment because it feels it feels like a lot of guys are physical touch and they all seem to marry women who are like the opposite. That's me and my husband. Like he's so loving, so gentle. He's always hugging me. And I have to remember like to hug back and maybe, you know, caress him. Like these are things that I didn't do my entire life. Like in my house, we only started hugging each other and saying, I love you with my parents. 10 years ago yeah i also it it is a part of how you're you know raised i guess like um i was dating someone i'll cover later who she said that she's not as affectionate because that's not really the way she grew up which is totally fine many people are like that i am very like i grew up in a family where there was a lot of hugging and a lot of like affection outward you know open and outward and i think that that obviously translates into dating and relationships and it's like very important for me yeah and i grew up with tough love And my husband grew up in a very loving home, like his parents. I've never heard them say anything bad about any of their kids. And it translates in the way he is. He sees the world 
with rose colored glasses, like in a positive light. And I think mm. that's a good way to be because I'm always looking for what's their motive, what's their real intention, like something sinister. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Um, I think that us dog people, whether it's men or women, we just want affection, cuddles, and I don't know, just people around us. Like I, I don't, I, I like to be alone once in a while, but I like attention, especially from a partner, you know? Why do you think black cats and golden retrievers are drawn to each other? Because I see this in a lot of relationships. It's the dynamic. Isn't it just the whole opposites attract thing? It's like introverts and extroverts are always dating each other. Black cats, golden retrievers, you know, um, you know, I don't even know the other. Uh, I think we're making them up, but we know of golden retriever and black cat because our friend, hot friend sheets, she was like, what am I? And I was like, babe, I think you're a wolf. Like, I think yeah. you're <laughs> We love hot friend sheets, but she is more than she's a she's definitely like in the canine family, but definitely not a dog. She's got she's got a wild side. <laughs> like a husky. Yeah, of course. A husky. But I think it's because we provide some fun and spunk and we're feisty. And then you guys provide like this light, airy, peaceful mm -hmm. happiness that we sometimes lack yeah so i guess there's like um uh, i do like girls that are a little sassy and playful um which i guess is black cat energy um and look no one should ever change who they are right i think it's like be who you are and then find the compatibility but it does feel like um i don't know are there successful black cat and golden retriever relationships like yours for example i mean i'm very happy Mm -hmm. I hope my husband's happy with me. But we're <laughs> very happy and we get along great. But see, I think now we're crossing over to lifestyle and compatibility, which I think is different. I think black cat energy and golden retriever energy, those are personality traits. I think opposites can attract in terms of personality, but I don't think people with opposite lifestyles and beliefs can succeed like mm. we're both neat freaks we're both type a like we are both healthy we live similar lifestyles and we want the same things in life our end goals are the same mm. i think that's different from personality agreed i mean there's personality and there's also there's goals there's ambitions there's also i think like preferences like i think the other opposite i was going to bring up earlier was like morning people versus like early birds, night owls, right? Which we've talked about on the pod before. Um, I don't know if that's a deal breaker, but it is tough, right? And then there's others like veg and non-veg, which for you guys, you're veg together. So maybe- We're uh, veg together and it would be very tough if we weren't. All my husband's partners take him to steakhouses and he eats the broccoli and the mashed potatoes and the mac and cheese. I was gonna say the mac and cheese, but- no lobster or whatever's in it, you know. No. no. But yeah. um, yeah, I think food is definitely a way to bond and food is a love language for us. We've discussed this before. So if you were to have someone that couldn't eat half the things you're eating, or like even when we and you go out, we make arrangements, but like you don't want to eat veg. Absolutely not. And I don't want to eat meat, but I'm okay <laughs> with things that have touched meat because I've eaten everything before. But right. if you were with a very strict, pure vegetarian person that couldn't have the curry that had the chicken in it, you know, then you're not really enjoying anything together. Well, we, we've definitely spoken to people, even like listeners of the pod who are like, we're only into vegetarians because we're vegetarian. And that obviously, you know, makes your dating pool smaller. But there's um, that that's something you just have to understand. And is is that what, how important is it for you? For me, it's very important. Yeah, I think it's very important but for me it wasn't that important because I'd already eaten meat mm. my entire life but there are people that have it as like it's a deal breaker would it be a deal breaker for you I think like I almost am doing it as an act of revenge because the vegetarians like <laughs> and, you know the super strict ones like we only date veg like well you know screw you I'm not veg I'm only dating carnivores so that's Absolutely. my act of aggression <laughs> yeah. 
brown people can be weird, especially South Asians. I'm going to say when it comes to veg and non-veg, like they will pass over someone awesome because they eat meat. Yeah, I've definitely seen on the dating apps, like there's like girls who are like swipe left if you've ever, if you're into eating living things and they're brown, I'm like the rest of the profile is great. And I'm just like, yeah, that's that's just not going to work, you know? Yeah, it's too much. It's a little extreme. Yeah. But, you know, it is what it is. So yeah. Yeah, I can agree, like lifestyle, opposites in lifestyle is different from like black cat, golden mm. retriever. But what are some misunderstandings that you think could happen in this dynamic because Mm -hmm. they can be different like someone who is a happy go lucky person can be worn down by someone that's you know moody and dark and sarcastic yeah i think you can kind of take things the wrong way when someone's trying to be just playful or just themselves with unless you have that communication i think you can also have you know um a misunderstanding of like, why are you not so affectionate? Like, did I do something wrong? Are you mad at me? And that's just something to navigate that I've learned, you know, dating so complicated in 2023. Our parents didn't have to deal with any of this. Our parents didn't even know what they were. They were just like told to marry each other. (laughs) They They didn't have these like descriptors or lifestyle. Like they didn't live together. They just were told like, this is who you're marrying say yes or no i mean they were given the choice yeah no i think it was like you you get three people or something and you choose like which of these three people (laughs) and the decision was based off of like two conversations (laughs) like they didn't go on a date they were like the date was like you sitting in the living room with your parents (laughs) yeah the parents are in the living room you're in the other room and you're just like talking there's no like open there's no like kissing or physical or any of that stuff it's just like you deal with that later (laughs) You deal with it after, after childbirth, I guess. (laughs) I don't know. I think like it can be really fun and exciting in the beginning, like hot and heavy Mm -hmm. with the black cat golden retriever energy. Yeah, I I can definitely see it. I've definitely gone through it before. And I feel like uh, people listening, I'm, I'm curious, like, is it just us and our friend groups? I don't know. I think the key is to like adapt though, because it's 2023, do the work. You should know your partner's communication style and their personality traits and what they like and don't like. And so if you see that your partner's a golden retriever, not literally, but like has that energy, you know, maybe try to be a positive light for them. I I'm mindful to make sure that I don't paint my husband's world black well i think what you do, that do with you guys i was just about to say if you're gonna have that energy you just spew garbage in the group chat all day and we just have to deal with it i like abuse in the group chat i yell at you guys make you guys miserable and then like with my husband i'm like i vented with you guys and i'm nice to him yeah he has no idea what's going on he misses the 750 texts every day that is happening <laughs> Yeah, he's probably like, what is happening here? But (laughs) I think the point of our group chat is to keep everyone in line. Which doesn't happen because we're all very misbehaved. (laughs) And also we give people advice on this pod that we don't listen to. Yes, but that's we've been doing this for years. At least we admit it now. (laughs) At least we know we don't do anything we tell you to do. But I will say if you do listen to the advice on this pod, you'll be fine. (laughs) We just don't. Yeah. You know, as golden retrievers, we have some stability. We have a lot of light and joy. And, you know, I think maybe the answer is balance. Like maybe it's like we're too happy, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Because sometimes, like, I tell you, I tell my husband, I'm like, wait, you don't think this person's shitty? And you guys are like, no, they're nice. And I'm like, why am I thinking they're shitty? Well, I think. I think I've changed. I've like I've started to understand some of the things you will you say and now I agree. <laughs> because being a black cat, you can tell immediately, right? Like what someone's like. I feel like we're very intuitive. And then you guys think like everyone's nice and loving cuz you're nice and loving and sometimes I feel like you guys are in the danger zone. 
Because well, you're a little what, naive. What happens is we find out the hard way, right? You get slapped. And then I think like, I'll say like, I don't like this person. And you'll be like, bro, I told you this like a year ago. That literally <laughs> happened this week. I was like, I told you this person was awful this summer. <laughs> but I you... said, everyone needs to learn on their own because if I keep telling everyone who's awful and who's not, then I look like a hater and a weirdo. So you guys need to learn on your own. It's true. Very true. Well, that's the problem. Us golden retrievers, very naive. We we think the best of everyone and then we wait until they we get kicked. I also think you guys are the life of the party. Like mm. I will party depending on who I'm with. Like again, I'm moody. Like I could be at a party and be silent the entire time. Whereas I feel like you guys are just happy to be at the party, wherever it is, whoever's there in a good mood. And I love that about you guys. Yeah, totally. Um, obviously depends. Sometimes we're a little tired, but in general, if there's uh, some, there's a fun shindig going, we're, we're kind of the ones like keeping the vibe going. That's why people like having us, you know? Yeah. And I don't think I've ever like heard you or my husband scream ever. Yeah, no. What's the point? We're the ones getting screamed at. <laughs> <laughs> my poor husband. So we we got the iPhone 15. And uh, let's just say we had to get a new one because of me. <laughs> Do you want to tell the whole story? <laughs> yeah, I can I can tell the whole story because I'm open with people on the pod. And I usually don't do things like this, but I'm so frustrated with things in my own life that have nothing to do with my husband, my family, or my friends. It's all things that are deep rooted in me that we'll talk about in the next episode. And the stress of, you know, going to do live shows and all of that that I'm projecting right now in my life. And I can be an adult and have some self-awareness and say that, yeah, I'm projecting. And we all know I, you know, my baseline can be depression at times. And I just wasn't in a good place that week. Mm -hmm. And my husband was worried about me. And so he called my parents, you know, to just be like, I just want to make sure everything's okay. And I got so mad at him for calling my parents because if you're brown, you know, all your parents do is yell at you. So I thought that, you know, they would yell at me. I thought it was kind of sweet, like, you know, checking in. Yeah, he well, obviously my husband was being a sweetheart. And instead, my parents, gotta love them. They tell my husband, oh, yeah, that's just her. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and uh they didn't say anything to me either they were just like make sure you know you don't let whatever's wrong with you like your you know depression or whatever seep into your partner's life and yeah you guys are living together but if someone's doing fine like don't pile on I don't believe in piling on and I kind of did that and in my rage I and this is how girls are evil. I knew he had just canceled Apple Care. Oh God, that's right. Because I'm an asshole. Yeah. And um, so I took the phone and threw it on the floor twice. That's that's pretty intense and kind of an overreaction. I'm thinking like uh a spoiled brat. Yeah, it's very spoiled brat vibes and, you know, maybe maybe some uh, anger management or therapy for you. <laughs> but it's so out of character, I'm saying, because I've never done that. I don't scream. I was just so upset he called my parents because I thought they'd, like, yell at me because they're boomers and they're, like, all they care about, like, is, like, that I'm married now. The whole point is I thought they they yell at you till marriage. They yell at you till the end. Your mom's still calling you and yelling at you. Well, I'm not married, but you are. So I'm I like, think you just keep getting yelled at till the end, the bitter <laughs> end. And so, yeah, I felt very awful about it and almost embarrassed. I'm going to say almost embarrassed because I do feel isolated here when I'm in Arizona. And I've discussed that on here with you guys as well. Mm -hmm. And so I just felt like, you know, I don't want to be here. And I'm frustrated with my own 
inner demons with regard to my ambition and where I am in my career. And so, yeah, that was just an act of rage, totally unnecessary and embarrassing because, and that's when you're embarrassed, when you're with such a classy guy that doesn't raise their voice and doesn't do this bullshit and isn't toxic. And then you're acting a fool. Like that's where I was like, Oh, like I wanted to put my head down and like disappear. Like I was embarrassed. (laughs) And then we got a new phone and the poor associate at the store, like, I guess he saw the pain in my husband's eyes and was like, you saw the puppy, you saw the puppy dog eyes, saw the puppy dog eyes and was like, well, we'll take care of it and you can re-sign for Apple Pay or Apple Care. Love that. Wow. Great story. Glad you uh, shared Great with the Great story that no one should listen to and that no one should do. And it's gross. I admit so that's it. angry it black hat, angry black hat energy right there. <laughs> I was thinking like feral, like a feral cat. Feral raccoon energy. Feral <laughs> in a trash can. Raccoon energy. <laughs> disgusting don't condone the behavior i'm so embarrassed and i'm just grateful that i'm with someone awesome who was like let's get you a new phone and you know i i did not appreciate that and now he's hiding all our electronics (laughs) (laughs) yeah well i feel like um you say that i always tend to date black cats like historically which i haven't really done the research and the deep dive on that but i would like to date a fellow golden retriever but you th- you don't think, I think you'd be bored the one golden retriever we won't name her you dated you dumped her you made the girl cry <laughs> the public restaurant and i called you and you called me from the bathroom stall <laughs> you would be so bored <laughs> i like that so maybe it's yes good. <laughs> so maybe it's good you could be a little evil too. We all have a little evil in us. Yeah, that's true. Well, um, you anything... paid dearly after that. You got. Your... I did. I did. I think there was some karmic retribution. I got COVID, and then I dated Ponzi, the gold digger. You know, good times. Who just fled to India and left? Yeah, and um, I don't even know what she was. She was a chameleon, which we've also covered before. So yeah, could she have been was anything. taking on your personality. <laughs> um but yeah any, anything else um about no, I think that's cats it. and dogs great I think that's it if you're in this dynamic i think it works beautifully but try to keep a balance like keep some of your black cat to yourself Ooh, i like that and if you're a golden retriever do you keep some of that to yourself too i think you should be a little more fierce or feisty mm standoffish maybe standoffish or not give so much that can Mm. be a turnoff too don't be so giving and i don't mean to your partner i mean like to people like you don't have to be you don't have to be nice to everyone you can be kind to everyone like you can be polite but you don't need to go above and beyond for everyone is that your way of saying don't don't simp don't be a simp (laughs) don't even though we are co-ceos even though we're co-ceos but i feel like you're You've graduated. We've come a long way, I think. I hope. And I'm a simp for my husband. Like, if I'm going to simp for anyone, it's going to be my husband. And that, you know, iPhone demolition was a one-off. I'm My husband's very lucky to have me. I do think you get one a year. One temper tantrum per year. And we've seen it. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think, what was the last big one? Was it, was it the uh, rooftop proposal? <laughs> rooftop proposal. Yeah, one a year. Blue Ribbon Sushi. And that and this is this year, yeah. And if you don't listen to the pod and you don't know what Blue Ribbon Sushi is or the proposal, you can just go back to listen to the episode called Engaged and Un- Unhinged. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for listening, guys. It's, I'm glad we went over that because we've been wanting to talk about that for a while. Yeah, I think it's been super Short popular. It's It's been on TikToks. I don't even watch TikTok and I've been seeing it pop up in places. So topical. Great. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for sipping the chai with me this week. 
If you like the show, remember to rate, review, and subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram at Anish Ramakrishna. I would love to hear from you. Join me next week for more chats.